In this video, I am going to be discussing who I think is going to be qualifying for the NFL playoffs in each conference. And I know that, that we have plenty of time for things to change, but there are some things I'm more confident in than other events, you know, occurring. Um, so, you know, right now I'm in a position where you have to just look at everything and it's even like analyzing schedules and predicting teams that way. I'm just not doing it this time. I'll do it. If I already know it, I'll do it. And I can go briefly if it's like easy-ish or hard-ish. But I just don't feel like it's worth it to get into that stuff about, you know, what, you, you know, about schedules. And the reason why I say that is because so far this year, it's been very chaotic with, um, you know, schedules and teams beating teams they really shouldn't beat, like the Browns beating the 49ers, or the Jets beating the Eagles, or the Broncos beating the Chiefs. Um, I will say in the case of the Browns, they have proven to be a very good team this year. So that's a positive going for the Browns. Um, and the 49ers did take a collapse after that. So again, it's not like the total most embarrassing thing in the world in hindsight. But there's been a lot of craziness. I mean, the Rams, the LA Rams um, swept the Seattle Seahawks this year. And now the Seahawks have a tough schedule coming up. I'm less sure if they're going to make the playoffs. But, again, there is some reason to believe that they have a chance. Um, I mean, Cowboys lost to the Cardinals this year. So there's, again, a lot of stuff that makes it tough, you know, tougher to suggest whether or not a team is going to qualify for the playoffs. Now, in the AFC, I, I, it's something pretty obvious. The Chiefs are going to qualify for the playoffs. Um, it's also highly likely that a team like the Ravens qualifies for the playoffs. The Ravens are actually ahead of the Chiefs for the number one seed. Last year, uh, not last year, two years ago in 2021, they were also 8-3 and three, number one in the AFC at this point, And they went on a six-game losing streak to end off their season due to injury. But we can't let superstition hold us to believe that the uh, Ravens aren't going to do it. And the Ravens have a somewhat easier schedule ahead of them. It's not like easy, easy, but it's not that hard either. So it would take something truly catastrophic for the Ravens to suffer an all out collapse like that. I think that in the case of the, um, of the, what's it called, you know, the J Jacksonville Jaguars are going to probably make it. They've been playing inconsistently, but they are 7-3 and three right now. And again, I mean, the Titans did collapse from 7-3 last year, but it's just so hard. Now, the AFC South is competitive, so, and they do have a serious challenge from the Houston Texans. Um, and the Colts might put up some resistance as well, but I'm not taking the Colts that seriously. Texans are a team that Jaguars fans be worried about, but I think they'll get it done and make the playoffs. And Dolphins, same thing. They're playing a lot of, they're playing five easy games, and then they're playing three tough teams. And they might be flawed by only being the easy teams and going 11-6. and six. But... That's still going to be playoff worthy. Unless we have an AFC that's so competitive, it rises to like 2008 levels where 11 and 5 isn't good enough to make it in. And with that seventh seed in the playoffs, it would really take a lot um, for that to happen. I will note Dolphins went 10 and 6 in 2020. They didn't make it to the playoffs, even with uh, seven seeds. So nothing can be ruled out. Um, and going, uh, you know, you know, you know, going 10 and 6 for the Dolphins would be an even five to split. So they have to keep fighting, but they have an easy-ish schedule ahead of them. I think they'll get the job done. 
Now, for the wild cards, we have Browns, Steelers, and Texans. And then the Bills are kind of on the bubble. There are other teams that are on the bubble as well. But I'm not going to take them too seriously for now. and only describe them in brief detail. Yeah, the Browns and Steelers pretty much beat up on each other. And the Browns narrowly eked out a win. I'd be pretty confident in saying the Browns are going to the playoffs just based on their 7-3 record. Also, they finished last place in the AFC North. Um, so... You know, the schedule isn't going to be too hard because of the quality of the other teams that they can be expecting to face. Whereas the Steelers, who finished second, might face more challenges. They're also getting outgained in every category, like the Minnesota Vikings. This can come back in the ass and bite them. Because if they're being outscored in all these categories, it's only a matter of time before they, you know, eventually lose. Because their bullshit doesn't, can't always hold out. Eventually, they're going to be detected. Texans have been on a project with CJ Stroud. They went 0-2 to start off this season. Which, while it is true that going 0-2 is a famous curse that um, has ended a lot of season prematurely, Texans started 0-3 in 2018 and made the playoffs. So, again, I have reason to believe that the Texans are going to do it. Bills have a not too easy schedule coming up, and they are playing the Eagles. So, again, you know, I'm not that confident they'll be able to catch up with anyone um but you know i think that's the chiefs at some point in the season but it just you know they, 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 they there's a real chance that they can make it uh at this point though not really don't the other teams don't have a chance Bengals were five and five or five and four before they lost to a bow now they lost in a five and five they have to play teams with like the chiefs and other difficult teams, you know, coming up. Because I don't think they play the Jags yet either. I don't know if the Bills play the Jaguars yet either. And these teams just are not doing well. They are not good teams right now. Bengals, especially without Joe Burrow, they're probably going to finish with a losing record. We're probably going to see 2020 Bengals return. And this could actually wind up still being a really bad season, even by old Bengals standards. No postseason for Bengals, I don't think. Really, the AFC is so, you know, bitterly contested that almost all of the teams at this point are within two games of the playoffs. Even terrible teams like the Jets, who are third last, they're actually only two games out of the playoffs. But in a lot of cases, these teams still don't control their own destiny. So while it's a wide open race, I think that we can safely say that it's really only a couple of teams that are in, like, serious competition for the playoffs right now. Now, in the NFC, Eagles, they're definitely going to make it. Hard schedule coming up, but they beat the Chiefs. I think that eventually they get a little bit worn down, but they uh, they have a very good chance of being a Super Bowl winner. Go Eagles. In the case of, you know, the Lions, Lions have a pretty easy schedule coming up, um, and they're 8-2 and two right now. They really earned this. Yes, they did get beat up by the Baltimore Ravens, but, I mean, they're playing the Packers on Thanksgiving, so that should be their fifth win over them. Lions, again, like the second worst team in football in 2021. Um, but they got a win over the Packers, and they swept them last year. They almost hit the playoffs. It was a tiebreaker with the Seahawks that kicked them out. And now we could very easily see them go full fourth and take the NFC North and be one of the best teams in the NFC. You know, a good comparison is the Orioles. The Orioles were one of the worst teams in baseball in 2021. 2022, they were, like, on the border of making the playoffs. They were, I think, three games out from playoff contention, maybe four games out. So, not too bad considering that baseball is 162 games. Um, and then, 2023, the Orioles, you know, wind up getting the one seed and having their best season since 1980, even though 1980 did not result in a playoff berth. However, if that holds true for the Lions, maybe they'll even get the one seed and get a bye to the divisional round. But we can't really forecast them winning any games. So in a postseason, they have to not be like the Orioles. Um, and again, I'll just be interested in seeing how this winds up going for the Detroit Lions. Um, now, 
After that, we have San Francisco 49ers. Really, their really bad losing streak should be over, and I'm not going to totally jump out and say that 49ers are going to be um, winning all their main games, but they should get the job done. They should make it into postseason. Um, and Seahawks are not winning the NFC West this year. Now, in the case of the um, uh, Saints, they're only 5-5 five and five right now. Saints are 5-5. Five and five. They have the easiest schedule in football all year, so they might fluke into the playoffs the same way the Eagles did in 2021 or the Giants did in 2022. I think that's possible. As the NFC South winner, maybe they could win the wild card round. Don't expect them to go much farther than that. I don't think the Saints are going to be um, a too successful of a team. But on the other hand, the Buccaneers just started off really good, and then they collapsed. And Falcons, Desmond Ritter, not as you know good as the hype around him once was. I mean, they jumped out to 2-0 after winning the last two games of last year, but they've gone 2-6 since. They're 4-16 uh, right now. And I'm not going to say the schedule is that hard, but it's like really not that easy either. As for the wild cards, Cowboys, I think that I I think they're gonna do somewhat similar to how they performed last year. Um, you know, Cowboys can take can defeat difficult teams, and they can also lose to really easy teams. Um, the Cowboys were actually inches away from winning the Eagles uh, against the Eagles in Week Nine, so that is something to really be. Uh, worrisome about for the Cowboys. They are playing the Commanders on Thanksgiving, though. So, again, I don't anticipate there being too much of a challenge there. Seahawks, I think, are actually going to possibly fade out of play of contention. They're 6-4, and four, and they got swept by the Los Angeles Rams. The Los Angeles Rams swept the Seattle Seahawks. After the Seahawks got their first sweep of the Rams since 2013, when they won the Super Bowl. Um, and the Rams are like a 4-16 and 16 right now. Seahawks are 6-4. and four. The Seahawks were very close to losing to the Washington Commanders. They, you know, had their chance to be number one in the NFC West after, going, after being 5-2. and two, But then they lost brutally. Um, they All they got was a single field goal in their Week 8 game against, I don't know who... Whoever it was, I'm honestly not sure who um, who defeated them in week eight. I think the Ravens. And while it's true, the Ravens are a very good team this year. The Seahawks should not have struggled against the Commanders, and they should not have lost to the Rams. And they lost on a missed field goal as well. A field goal that they were really a good team. They should have made, sealing the win, putting them at 7-3, and three, and making them a serious threat to the 49ers. Now they aren't, though, and I think the Seahawks could be that team that collapses out of playoff contention. Um, Vikings are 6-5. and five. They were on a five-game win streak after a miserably bad start, starting 1-4. But it seems to me that once they began to finally gain respect in the NFL, they lost to the Denver Broncos, who've actually also been on their rise. Again, they're 5-5, five and five, and they have a new head coach. I don't exactly think that the Broncos are going to make the postseason this year, but this is a good foundation. Um, teams that start 0-3 and, and later go 1-5 and five have a very poor track record of making the postseason. Only two teams that ever started 0-3 and three made the postseason. I don't know about 1-5. and five. I know there's actually been only one ever 2-17 and 17 that wound up making the postseason. Um... The 2020 um, Washington football team, which, by the way, still had a losing record that year. So, this goes without saying that the Broncos, they really need to keep it up. And, again, I don't, you know, their schedule from here on out isn't too, too bad. But, remember, they're the Broncos. They can pretty much lose to anybody. I mean, like, they lost to the Jets, for crying out loud. So... It, again, it's 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 really hard to say what's going to happen with the Vikings. Packers are the eight seed in the playoffs, but they're still two uh, two uh, a game and a half behind. 
they have four and six right now. So, you know, it's it's not the best position for the Packers, but it also really states that the NFC is pretty secure. I really don't know who's gonna who, who's gonna make it. I think the Seahawks will be booted out, but what see might see the Seahawks is a pretty bad NFC this year. Okay, so that's that video. Um, you know, um, what we've clearly seen is that some teams that have made the playoffs last year aren't making it back. Some teams are like they might in a position where they might make it back or they might not. Um, and and we're gonna see again a lot of repeats. A lot of teams who made the playoffs last year are going to be coming back. At this point, I think the Bengals aren't coming back. I think the Bills aren't coming back. I think the um, the Giants definitely aren't coming back. And I really don't think there's a chance that um, we see this major heroic comeback for the Chargers as well. And, um, but I definitely think that most teams that made the playoffs last year are going to qualify again you know, as it kind of should be. So, again, those are just kind of my thoughts.